guys hello hello today I'm in the kitchen stuff a chicken and roast it I'm doing a old time stuffing that my mom used to do bringing back those Guyanese flavors so I got my pan heated up here and I chopped half an onion I have some sage chopped sage like one sprig of sage garlic my trusted weary pepper some fine leaf thyme and some rosemary so i have my pan heated here to that i'm gonna add some butter so this was a half pound of butter so this is what like four ounces of butter i have here so i'm gonna do like two tablespoons of butter. That's one, two. So two tablespoons of butter and I'm going to get this melted a little bit. Then I'm going to add my onions to that because you want all this nice flavors in the pot. Oops. And I have chicken livers and the giblets, the giblets. So I chop those up to a nice size. So I'm gonna start adding my onions to start caramelizing. Break them down a little. See the butter is brown in nicely, so I started adding my aromatics, and this gives it a really nice flavor. To that, I'm gonna add my garlic. So this is gonna start getting. You see the onions is changing color it gets a nice translucent color so it's changing i'm gonna start adding in my nice blueberry pepper it's gonna be a little spicy guys spice is nice spice is nice yes a nice little stuff in let me add my sage in at this stage at this stage we need the sage this butter with these um, onions and so caramelizing it smells so lovely guys I'm gonna start adding my chicken liver you see you got a pound there right this is half a pound of oh, chicken liver mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> Get this going. For those who do, don't like um, chicken livers, you can add um, the Italian sausages to it. But we used to do, back in the day, we never had Italian sausages and all those stuff in Guyana. So we would usually use the, the giblets and the livers and the stuff from the chicken. And the heart. And the heart. If you don't like that, some people do like um, like ground pork or whatever meat you like to add to it. So I'm gonna cross this nicely. And guys, I must say, the thing that brings a stuff in this type of stuff in together for me is black pepper. So maybe about one teaspoon of black pepper because you like that little black pepper flavor. So one teaspoon. Yeah, that's about a teaspoon of black pepper. 
Uh, black pepper is a, is a main ingredient in most dishes. Mm -hmm. It brings everything together nicely. So I'm going to add a little bit of rosemary in there. I'm just going to break them. This is about a teaspoon, tablespoon of rosemary. Just going to break them up in there. When they named that, it was a, a dispute of either Rose or Mary. So they just, you know, name it both <laughs> Rose Mary. Yep, I don't know. Let me break this pepper down to get some nice flavor in here. I find when you put the pepper in, and you start frying it first and then you break it down, you just get a more nice intense flavor than if you chop it up from beforehand. You know when you chop it up from beforehand and it hit the oil? Man, you start sneezing and everything. So this is salt. Let me do a teaspoon of salt. See how nice this is. So this, I'm not going to cook it all the way through because it will finish cooking in the oven because I'm stuffing the chicken with it and you don't want the liver to dry out and overcook. So I'm going to turn this off, let it cool for a little here. All right guys, I have, this is like a six pound chicken. And I seasoned it yesterday and let it marinate overnight. I had a blend of wiri pepper, say about three wiri pepper, two tablespoons of fine leaf thyme. I did um, like um, six cloves of garlic because I like a lot of garlic on it. Half an onion. Two sprigs, two stems of scallion or green onions as you call it. I did like two tablespoons of salt, one and a half tablespoon of black pepper, and one tablespoon of paprika. So I seasoned this nicely, I stuffed it, I drizzled two tablespoons of oil over it, vegetable oil, and I stuffed my seasonings under the skin in the cavity and everything. So this is, you can see the seasonings under the skin here. So the breast will be nicely seasoned. So now I'm going to stick, this is one tablespoon of butter. So I'm gonna stick them under the skin. And it's, it's easier if your butter is a little um, cold so you can put it in the fridge to so cool up a little. And this is gonna keep this breast nice and juicy and moist. And flavorful. So you stick that under there. And now, let me do a quick rinse. Now guys, I'm gonna use Crick's original crackers. This is from Trinidad or somewhere. Yeah, Trinidad. Trinidad. So we used to have these um, crackers back in the day. Breco de. What is it? Breco de. Breco de. That was a Guyanese um, brand. Then they have um, Triscuit too? Yes, that's that. Yeah, that was after the Breco de. But I know we used to get these big cans of um, mm -hmm. crackers. Yes. And there's what um, we used to use originally to make our stuffing, but um, you can get any salt, like plain crackers, to use. So this is my um, crisps. I love crisps. Yeah, put them in my bowl and give them a, a, a break, break them apart. So that was one sleeve. Let me see. I may need another sleeve. Yeah. So 
So this is original gynae stuffing that we would make back in the day. Come on, Mr. Cricks, come on out. I think that should be enough. one and a half sleeve. So for this now, I'm gonna add black pepper, like a tablespoon, not tablespoon, a teaspoon, because we already had some black pepper in the um, liver, so we don't wanna make it too overly, but this brings it together nicely, too overly spicy. Yes, it's like a, a teaspoon. We're gonna add some paprika, about a teaspoon of paprika. Mmm, that black pepper hit my nose. And a teaspoon of salt. Break this apart. And we have two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna add the rest. I had one sprig of um, rosemary, so I'm gonna add the rest of rosemary in here. You could chop it more finely if you want, but I just, just break it apart. So you know, it's one sprig of rosemary going into this stuffing, which is about three or four tablespoons. And fine leaf thyme, which is the same amount, about three or four tablespoons. And these are the flavors that we are accustomed to. Um, back in the day, I don't think we had rosemary. I'm not I sure. We never had it there. But use the fine leaf we use the fine leaf thyme. Now, a kind of evaporated milk. I'm going to drizzle it. And this is cooled down, so I'm going to add my livers that has been stirred a little bit. With my onions and stuff. <clears throat> Smells real good. Mm hmm now you get in there with your hand because everything is cool and you just mix it in nicely so the milk is to help the um hydrate the crackers because it's dried so put the milk in or if you don't use milk, you can use like some chicken stock. But I like my milk in it. And I had one more whole pepper in here. I'm gonna smash it in to give it that nice flavor. Break down my butter. See you rubbing the butter and everything. And incorporate everything nicely so look how good this looks guys I'm gonna drizzle so you know it's like um quarter can like a quarter cup of um evap milk I use so look at this you don't want it too soggy again but it must be nice and this is our gyne style stuffing. Let me smush this pepper in here. Mm, it smells so good, Abby. Yeah. So now <clears throat> my chicken is here. I am going to stuff this in the cavity. in there nicely to have a nice and the little juices from the chicken is going to 
come into this um, stuffing and you shall have a nice flavorful stuffing guys back in the day this is traditional Christmas dish yeah got your stuffed chicken there man mm -hmm. This tough baked chicken there. This is enough. So this now you can either leave it like this or put a skewer or we would um stitch it together with our needle and thread back in the day. So I'm gonna leave this and get this in the oven to start roasting. This is the chicken neck that was in the cavity so I'm gonna leave him underneath there so he can roast nicely you don't have to close it you can leave it this way or I used to get a needle and thread and stitch through close it up mm -hmm. but you can leave it like this and it will cook nicely and the rest of this stuff and you can put it in a baking dish and bake this on the side until the rest of the livers are cooked nicely about uh, 20 minutes because they're almost they're already almost cooked so i'm gonna pop this bad boy in the oven now and let it go this is gonna this chicken is gonna take about two and a half hours to bake at 350 50 degrees yes so you can um some of them come with the thermometer inside but gyne style you check to see when the bones are start coming through as usual we had thermometers back in the day so we will let it go roast there nicely at 350 degrees for two and a half to three hours okay. i let it go so it's you know it's fully cooked all right, so guys, I'm gonna put um, a piece of foil over to start my chicken so the breath does not dry out. And you let this go with, um, if you have a thermometer, you check it until it's 165 degrees Fahrenheit. That's how, when you know your chicken is fully cooked. But I let it go, because um, I normally don't do the um, thermometer. I let it go for two and a half to three hours so i let it go this way for the first hour then i open it up and let it start going the rest of the way. and you can also raise your oven to 400 degrees for the first 15 minutes but back in the day we had all of that yes. so for people who got all of that you know you you put your chicken in and let it go for two and a half to three hours and you know you got a fully cooked chicken so i'm gonna let it go for the first hour with the foil then i'm gonna uncover it and let it keep going while i keep basting it i'm gonna show you the steps in a few all right my chicken has been in the oven for an hour i'm gonna give it a check and see how it looks It's bringing its juices and our wing is starting to get a little bit of color so I'm gonna brush it with the juices that it spring and it's so natural juice smells good mm -hmm. smells good it looks good let's hope it tastes good as a no brainer what <laughs> tastes good this is a nice bird, a nice big bird. Mm. And you can see the stuffing on this end here. Let's see. So I'm gonna brush the stuffing so it doesn't dry out either. And keep this going. I'm gonna pop this back in the oven now. And the, um, the rest of the stuff you did in the pan, the little pan is already done, right? Yeah, the um, leftover stuffing, I pop this in 
It's here. I just took it out. So, there's the rest of the stuff in. Yeah. So, I did that for about 25 minutes. I baked it for 20 minutes and open it up for five minutes to let it burn up on the top. And I took it out. So I'm gonna put her back in here and keep it going guys. In the next half an hour, I'm gonna uncover. All right, my chicken has been in the oven. I took it out halfway, basted it. I've already basted it three times since it's been in here. Guys. So now, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna baste again and let it cook for another hour. So, everything is starting, the wings are starting to fall off. Everything is looking good. Now I want my stuffing to dry out, so I'm gonna add a little bit of the juices on the stuffing too. And just let this go. The legs are starting to move apart too. So you know it's cooking nicely. I'm gonna let this go. And now I'm gonna bake it uncovered so it can start getting a nice little color on it while it's finishing up the cooking process. All right guys, so I'm, uh, my chicken has been in the oven for two hours and 45 minutes. I think that is good enough for me. It is fully cooked. As you can see, all the bones are protruding. The chicken is falling off the bone. See everything is starting to come apart. The wings are falling off. And when you, if you don't have a thermometer, you stick a, a sharp object, a knife or something, and see that clear juice is flowing in the thickest part of the chicken. See, you can do the leg, it's gonna go straight through. See that? So that's finished. No blood oozing, nothing. So this is perfectly cooked. I don't want to leave it in for the next 15 minutes because the breast is open and I don't want it to dry out. So this is what <clears throat> my baked Guyanese chicken, stuffed baked Guyanese chicken look like. And it smells delicious. It smells so good. I'm just gonna baste it a little to give it that nice shiny effect then i'm gonna let it rest i have to put it on a platter and let it rest for 10 minutes before you cut into it you have to let your meat rest because if you cut it now the juices are going to flow out and you're going to end up with a dry bird it's the breast everything is going to dry out so let it rest for like 10 minutes before you cut into it and please remember like subscribe thanks for watching this video drop your comments i love doing this i love having you in the kitchen with me let's enjoy guys